Hello, my name is Funk McLovin. Let me level with you guys for a sec. I've been slacking on making intros to these podcast episodes, like, you know, recaps, like I did before, because I've come to understand that most people who are listening to this uh, realize where we are in the comic at this point. Like, why would you be listening to this if you have not read Homestuck? That is ridiculous. For example, this episode focuses on the post-retcon pre-ending stuff. You know, the part where the reader gets to select from between a bunch of different boring conversations around Skya while Vriska plans to, like, kill Lord English or something. We kind of lose the thread and get lost in the weeds here. Uh, but let's be honest, you're not here for meticulous Homestuck recaps. You're here to hear me, Janiah, and Bucky dunk on a webcomic that you like and try to accomplish the Sisyphean task of making it better in some fucking fashion. This episode sees us brushing up against the notion of making it better, because frankly, this segment of the comic just kind of sucks ass. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy. We're getting closer to the end here, so thanks for sticking around. Uh, I love you. Hello, every... Oh. Uh, hey, I want to start this episode off real fast by reading uh, a review that someone very close to my uh, personal relation, someone I know IRL, uh, left. Mm-hmm. He, and I have to read this with all of the embellishments because the way he types is miraculous to me. <laughs> he is like an old man who never got in touch with like technology, so all of his comments read like like old man Facebook. Mm-hmm. Let me read this. He sent me a text. Okay. Hey, period. Listen to the pod. Pod is in quotes. I don't know anything about Homestuck, two words, but you and your friends seem knowledgeable. Make some more music. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. He said he would unsubscribe if I didn't make any more music. Oh, my so God. I thought that was funny. Oh, all right. Let's begin. So last time we talked about the retcon... This time we're going to talk about the post-retcon and do some cleanup on things that we might not have discussed all the way to fruition. Fucking, yeah. I wrote five things in the show notes. Lord English's quest, which we have not really delved into. We haven't really actually talked about much of the cherub stuff. So maybe we can cover that right now. Because now it becomes important. Uh, Vriska and Mina's quest for the Juju, as well as, uh, you know, the prophecy and such. Uh, we're going to talk about Sprites Squared, because that happens after the recon. Uh, we're going to talk about the Alpha and Beta kids finally meeting and how they interact and how that's very disappointing in normal Homestuck. And then Callie and Alt Callie following up with, uh, Lord English shit. So let's jump in with Lord English's quest. Uh, basically, Lord English slash Caliborn has a very straightforward quest. Uh, you know, win his fucked up, I don't remember what they call it. They called it a null session or a void session or something? Uh, null session, I believe. Whatever they called it, it's cool, conceptually. I like, I like Mm -hmm. what they got going on in a way. Um. Yeah. I think that actually... Quite frankly, Caliborn is one of the better written aspects of Homestuck. Just in mm-hmm. his characterization, his the the thing he is meta uh, a metaphor of, and sort of the way he is, uh, just being an antagonist. I don't really have much to say on this. We haven't talked about it much because I think the cherubs are a, a self contained thing, which doesn't really warrant much change. Maybe in how they interact with the kids or something. But, like, I don't know. Caliborn is one of the more beloved parts of Homestuck to the point where it's a meme to say that Caliborn is the true protagonist. So, just generally, what do you think of Caliborn's, broadly speaking, his progression into Lord English? Uh, we'll start from right to left today. So, Bucky, what do you think about What do you think about Caliborn? What's your thoughts? Um, I've got salmon in my mouth, uh... Just, I'm still going to talk, but just so you know why I sound like this. Um, <laughs> I mean, honey roasted oh, no. salmon for dinner. Um, That's good. Lord English. I, uh, again, I was an update reader. We all know this at this point. Um, mm-hmm. God. 
in during uh, during the lofty and and uh, deliber- deliberately ignorant opinings of the Homestuck Renaissance, um, the term reader hostility was sort of coined and then brought up as this like. You know, this is the best part of Homestuck that it does this, that no other piece of media has ever done this as well as Homestuck is blah, 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 And that sort of evolved to mean the fact that the creators of Homestuck hate the readers is good and that should show through in the writing. And But when I think of reader hostility in Homestuck, what I think of is sitting on my bed in high school with my shitty little netbook, uh, desperately trying to move the stupid little trackpad to click the next arrow on the bottom <laughs> of the screen that was bouncing around while Caliborn hit the screen with his crowbar. <laughs> like, th- oh, yeah. this whole sequence of, like, leading <laughs> up to how Caliborn becomes Lord English is, like, it's, it's so good because, like, this is one of the few times where, like, we know what is coming here. We know the dude has to become Lord English. But the question yeah, that's, is that's... how? That's clear from before he's introduced, yeah. Yeah. So, like, so like the question is, how does he go from, like, like uh, I, I was going to say autistic manlet, but I guess that's okay for me to say because I'm autistic. Uh, how do we go from autistic <laughs> shitlord manlet to uh, beefcakes Mc, McBarra teddy laser head? And, like, that... <laughs> That is interesting, because we find out that, like, Lord English isn't just Caliborn, and that's sort of, like, I think that that's interesting that he is sort of removed from Caliborn just slightly, and, because, like, Caliborn as he stood was an interesting character, but in order for him to become Lord English, some of his individuality sort of had to be stripped out, um, ah, god, I don't know, I, I genuinely do like that bit, I, I imagine that Caliborn is still going to interact with the author, but that it will be different than, um... It's obviously not going to be Hussy. But, like... I don't know. I, I like I like Caliborn. I like the way that he... That we get his journey sort of concurrent with, uh, like, next to the Alphas. Um, I like that he's got something completely different from the Alphas going on, and... I did really like the way that he was like introduced and 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 uh executed because it was that was interesting. The the meta narrative stuff was genuinely interesting. Yeah, I mostly agree. Um I think you hit on something with the idea that we know that Caliborn is Lord English and showing his journey into that is one of Homestuck's greater it's like a Columbo moment. They show the culprit first and then the question becomes in the narrative, how does he get there? And you can clearly tell he's fucking Lord English because he's like a mean asshole. And he's very antagonist coded, I will say. But unlike Beck Noir, or unlike a lot of these other characters who became sort of antagonists, he's very heavily characterized. And this is probably the best part of Act 6 for me is the setup of Lord English. Uh, the... You know, he's he's a villain you love to hate, and you can't help but be, like, a little charmed by him because he's he's very earnest, and he does try hard. There's something admirable about his quest where it's, like, the odds are stacked against him. Uh, not only does he not care, he, like, cannot care. He just does not have the capacity to, like, fail, basically, uh, which I like. I like that about him. He's very... Um, he's incredibly misled, but he has a lot of positive energy he could have been uh a cool character if not for the fact that he becomes like um a silent force of nature by the end which not a huge fan of uh, but like you said there is a reason for that at least so even when hussy fucks up with caliborn there is like you know a narrative reason for it that hussy was prepared for i don't know but my consensus is like yeah, it's the best executed part of Homestuck, probably. Uh, Caliborn's arc. I think this is also... Uh, I'm not going to try to get into Andrew Hussey's head, but this feels like the most planned out part of Homestuck, that Hussey had this idea for an evil guy who 
Because the way that Hussey himself, as the author, talks to Caliborn, it's like Caliborn is his son. He's like trying to guide Caliborn. And somewhat unintentionally, I think, it it ends up seeming like Hussey like kind of makes Caliborn the way he is, like the character Hussey makes Caliborn the way he is by antagonizing him through the narrative, which is very funny to me, uh, that it is the author's fault that, you know, we have the antagonist, which is sort of tracks with how stories are written. I don't know. There's a lot of meta shit. Uh, there's a lot of layers to him. I, again, I really have no complaints about Caliborn. All I can really do is analyze, and in the rewrite, I would hope to emulate that in a new context. Um, I like his, I like how he tries to draw, and he's shitty, but he doesn't <laughs> care. That's a very good vibe to me. Uh, anyway, Janiah, what do you have to say about Caliborn? Um, yeah, I'm, so before we started recording, I was saying, I was saying that, you know, this is probably one of the parts of the comic I'm going to have the least to say about and i'm realizing as i'm listening to this that that is a lie um <laughs> so i did like i uh, again archival reader have this sort of broad perspective of the whole comic um caliborn is pretty good and effective like that's the part of the comic where that like meta narrative stuff actually lands and like i think in the context of what we're doing with the rewrite it's going to work at least as well, if not slightly better, because so, <clears throat> excuse me, we have, we've established that there's kind of this, like, the concept of the narrative, that's the thing that, like, doomed everyone in Game Over, that's the thing that we've now started to subvert, because we've been able to start to rewrite the story, um, and we've got three characters that sort of serve as the representation of the narrative, Doc Scratch, Lord English and Caliborn, and they kind of represent like different aspects of that, like, but it's the same story. So, you know, Caliborn is a very like emotional, um, he's, you know, like, like you said, he's like really trying, like he's really trying to, to do his best and, you know, master this narrative. And, you know, he's very sure of himself. Um, Doc Scratch is very like, manipulative and that that sort of classic devil archetype and then lord english is a kind of force of nature which i think works really well in this case because like um you have sort of like caliborn and lord english kind of combining to i'm sorry caliborn and scratch kind of combining and you've got lord english as the the ultimate force and the way the story is working the way we're setting it up um this is the point at which like the integrity of the story as written by Doc Scratch, as written by Caliborn, as written by the original unspecified author is falling apart. Like the characters are starting to self-actualize beyond the context of the narrative. They've already uh, stepped outside of the framework of like, this is how the story was supposed to end. They were all supposed to die but one of them decided that she wasn't going to let that happen and she started to like you know scribble over the page in pen and it's like lord english is kind of the inevitable result of this because it's this like pure sort of rage and hostility and anger it's not it's not the same collected vibe as doc scratch and it's not the same kind of like belligerent stubborn confidence that calborn has it's just kind of like this as I see it, kind of this story's last ditch effort to save itself from just being completely rewritten. Because the ending here is the characters get to go do something that they weren't originally supposed to do. They get to they get to walk outside of the story and the story ends and the characters do whatever they do in our imaginations or in, you know, the world of hypotheticals. And the story ends differently than it was quote unquote supposed to. So I think that the way we've set things up, the Caliborn Lord English thing actually works, I think, even a little bit better. Like, it it feels more purposeful and meaningful. Like, you could definitely read this interpretation into Homestuck. Like, that's a thing you can definitely do, but I don't know to what extent that was purposeful. It's just, I do think the setup of Caliborn and Lord English was very deliberate, and I think actually is pretty good. Like, that's one of the parts of Homestuck um, I think works really well. Also, this stuff Bucky was talking about with, like, the meta narrative like 
Caliborn, you know, fucking with the screen. That stuff is cool. Like that's a good, you know, you you kind of got the idea that this is a this is a this is very painfully aware of the fact that it's a story and it's a story that's coming to its conclusion. And it's not concluding the way that the original author intended it to. So you've got this kind of like increasing meta narrative hostility and pushback and, and all that stuff. And yeah, I agree that the concept of reader hostility in the sense of, you know, the work is kind of like fighting back against the reader's experience reading it, not the author doesn't like the fandom. That That's not I don't like that in term. I don't like that. I don't like that at all, but also like. I don't like using the term reader hostility for that because it feels like it feels too neutral as opposed to just like an author that's kind of pissed off at their fans, which, you know, that yeah. sucks. Also, so. I regret <laughs> to inform you, I do have one more brief comment. Uh, we were talking about Equius earlier today, and uh, not only is he somebody yes. who helps contribute to Lord English, but I think something about Equius is relevant here, um, and that's that he's a fascist. Uh, because and that's relevant here yes. because uh, so Caliborn is a good example. Uh, I yes, I know he is a green alien. He's also I know that he's not <laughs> actually a human, but the dude's oh, an angry white boy. Like that. If you don't, if you don't interpret yeah. him as such, far be it for me to say that you're wrong. But like I specifically, I think that he is good at illustrating how. Uh, like the system, and in this case, the narrative and the meta narrative as it represents our society and a system, does it does have an impact on white men? It does also disillusion and disenfranchise white men. Oh. But like, by the time it gets to that, everybody else is in a much worse spot. So like, Caliborn is correct that as a neurodivergent p person, he is being treated differently because of his learning disability, as he puts it. Non-specified learning disability. Um, but like, he... I think he does a good job of illustrating how, like, you know, yeah, it's a recruitment tactic to get uh, white men into fash spaces by saying, like, by preying on the insecurities of being disenfranchised just like everybody else, but spinning it as people try to disenfranchise you because you're special. Mm. Cowboy is very special. Mm. Yeah. He is a very <laughs> special boy. Uh, Bucky, do you know what you, you just reminded me of? What? <laughs> you know who, do you know who Caliborn reminds me of in a sort of a cinematic parallel? Fucking Adam Driver's character in Star Wars. Oh uh, my god, you're right. Darth fucker. Yeah, he does. Darth, kind of Darth bastard. I mean, he yeah, he has a little <laughs> temper tantrum. What the um, fuck is his name? Yeah. Kyle. Kylo Ren. There Kylo it is. Kylo Ren. Um, oh, <laughs> anyway, he he does remind me of Kylo Ren in that he's like this. He's a he's a he's Kylo Ren if Kylo Ren was was smug instead of angry. Yeah. Um. That's. Yeah, that's fair. I could see Kylo <laughs> Ren like cutting off his leg in some misguided attempt to like fuck over his his perceived enemy. <laughs> um, I don't know. I you don't I do like. Ray. I but I like that. It's a good way. In order to grow stronger, I need to. <laughs> I need to make a. I need to make a sacrifice of myself. Ray, you don't understand. It's important. <laughs> yeah. Or, or on the flip, what if Caliborn was in Star Wars? Remember when Kylux was a thing? He, Remember he would... when Kylo Ren and Hux were like a huge ship? Oh, I... We can't do this. We can't do this. Vaguely, right. yes. We can't do I this. wish I could say no to that. <laughs> we can't go. We, we're right now on the teetering on the precipice of a rabbit hole that will be like a 30 minute diversion about fucking Jojo. I will disconnect from this call. <laughs> the fuckability of Lieutenant Hux from star war. No, um, just watch. Uh, what, there was uh what's his dick. Uh, Poe and, and Hux were in a different movie about AI. Just go watch that. If you want to fuck him so bad. No, yeah, no. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> fuck. Uh, Frank, watch Frank, watch the British movie. Frank, which stars both Hux and fucking Magneto, if you want. Whoa. Fucking Magneto? Is that like regular Magneto, but he fucks? <laughs> Do you think regular Magneto doesn't yes, fuck? that's exactly... <laughs> no, regular Magneto uh, gets the dick on the daily. He got that octogenarian... Well, no, never mind. Uh, anyway, let's talk about um, 
Mina's quest for the, well, the juju. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, something we have skipped over is Mina's, dead Mina's quest with Mina. Or sorry, dead Vriska's quest with Mina. It's like, yes, Mina's she's already she's dead, dead as well, job. so it doesn't, what? Yes. <sighs> um, they have a quest to, like, take down Lord English and, by finding a treasure. And this thread is advanced in sort of time jumps, which I like. Now, there is a plot point that I won't spoil for the viewers, but there will be another person on this quest with them in the rewrite, as I've discussed with you two. Uh, that other person is, you know, TB, TBA for now. But we can still talk about this in terms of Vriska and Mina's quest, like what it means, what it symbolizes, and basically the role of the dream bubbles in later Homestuck. And it's interesting because I guess my thoughts on this, I'll, I'll, I'll kick things off with this, is it's interesting to me that Homestuck has a weirdly hands-off approach with the big bad of the story. Really, only three characters meet Lord English in person, who are Vriska, who does the final standoff, Carcat, who is there at the final battle by mistake, and John, who basically shows up by accident and beats the shit out of him just because he thinks he's annoying, which is like very non-confrontational, which is interesting to me. The main conflict of Act 6 is... You know, Lord English destroying the the destroying paradox space. You know, cracking the foundation of reality by his time magic. But you know, <laughs> no one cares, <laughs> which is weird. Um, and it's basically outsourced to raising this army. Um, I guess my question would be then to you guys: What is a way to make this? conflict more grounded with the players who are not dead and what is a way to like establish danger with this we'll start with janaya because it sounds like you have something to say yeah actually there's a there's kind of a big one with this um and on i i'm a little hazy on the details from canon but this is in canon this is parentheses friska right the one that dies and then is is not dead because of the retcon um because of how we're defining the retcon as a rewrite of the story, parentheses Vriska doesn't coexist with post retcon. No, they like, are the same woman. So it would be either this is going to be a live Vriska with Mina, or we're going to do some fucky shit with yeah, the juju and how, like meta narrative stuff. Oh, I should explain that. My idea for this was so mm -hmm. before the retcon happens, Vriska is dead, and right. then whether or not we bring her back whatever but i think we should uh yeah if we uh, we're i think we're all leaning on we should and i think that's a good yeah. idea because Just she she gets brought back and she has to sit the fuck yes. down and, and chill in the corner and basically when she gets brought back though her because of how the retcon works as like uh, a game breaking cheat mode thing that we talked about in the last mm -hmm. episode she will have still done the things she did when she was dead paradoxically. Okay. So we cool. can still talk about her dead quest, even though she will no longer have like two versions of herself okay. that split yeah, off. From I, her. I, I actually like that. I like, I like the idea. She will that, retroactively like, become the, not dead, but she will. Right. You, the, gone. You're, you're good. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're doing. What you're doing. No, the, because we have like a, some level of like meta narrative horse shit. Yeah, we can get away with that. I, I, I actually like the idea that the, the juju is this, like, thing that kind of exists outside of, like, it's it's a part of the, it's a part of the story as a narrative construct. It gets moved around a little bit, and then some other shit gets rewritten in the script, but the juju is still moved around. So, like, I don't know, that's that's the kind of, like, weird, not fully explained kind of thing that's that's kind of fun to have. Like, again, I'm 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 team... You don't have to rigorously explain and define everything in your story as long as it works narratively. Um, and I think we've done enough, like, kind of fucky horse shit with, with meta narrative, and we're increasing the amount of that as we get into, like, the narrative breaking down. So, yeah, I like that. Um, other than that, like, I don't know. It's pretty good. 
like it's it's fine like i i don't remember how this works into the stuff with parentheses Vriska and mina's like relationship in canon um i don't in canon that sucks because it's a 13 year old and a 19 year going on like two billion year old come on in over here have a seat there um or however fucking old they're supposed to be in their like dream bubble eternal state um but we've made Riska an adult and i think we're axing that whole plot line anyway so yeah um, uh <clears throat> actually i i, I just I, I think that what yeah. happens like you say kind of fits nicely into what we're trying to do where Vriska finds the juju finds herself sort of like powerless and apathetic quits with mina then instead our new retcon which is not a timeline split so much as like a timeline band-aid can come in and give Friska something to do and she would you know be able to lose that apathy and, and stuff like that um right she she needs Friska's. i think Friska's ideal character growth in the rewrite is that she she learns to become non-apathetic while also not being important and special like she doesn't she doesn't continue to derive literally all of her self-worth from the fact that she's going to be the protagonist um, because she's super not. The prosuagonist. Sure. <laughs> because she's super not. Like, that's not a thing that's going to happen in this. We're not We're not making Vriska the the one at the head of the fucking ghost army, you know, um, making the big excuse stand. Excuse me, how else um, am I supposed to have my Antifa Caucasian girl boss, Kajadaya? <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, that's a great take that I don't hate at all. Um, and I think like this is, yeah, this is part of that process of like, Riska is kind of like coming to terms with the fact that, you know, she's not going to be the protagonist. She's not going to be the main character. Um, like she's done at this point, basically. And, and like having the thing we talked about in the retcon episode where we like have a couple passes of like Vriska tries to do stuff and fucks up and they have to reset and try again, like really hammering home the fact that like basically at this point. Briska's done everything she can do in this story. Like the the rest of the story for her, not that she gets shuffled off and forgotten about, because that was a that was a bad tendency of Canon Homestuck, is like once a character's kind of importance wanes, they just kind of forget that they exist. Um like Briska's still there, Briska's still present, but now she's like just she's just stepping back and letting the other people do their thing, and she is realizing that she doesn't have to be the only person to fix everything because like she can't <laughs> it doesn't work like that um so yeah I, I like their little quest i think we could give the specifics of that could be done up however however we need to make things work but like i really do think it all ties nicely together to vriska learning that vriska is not the most important person in the universe and like she just gets to she just gets to kind of step back and, and let other people handle this and like reflect for a little bit. And and that's the, this is basically the tail end of her character arc, which I think is in this case, I think a good thing. Yeah. Fucking. I don't know. I, I like. Uh, again, a lot of act six. I've said before that act six is one of my favorite parts of Homestuck, even though it has it has the highest highs, but it also has the lowest lows. And I think in revisiting this, I, we've kind of rediscovered the lowest lows. But now we get to talk about the highest highs. And get highest high. And then, like, I do... It, it, you, you'll hear this in the final <laughs> edit. There's, like, Rasta music playing or something. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. Highest highs. Fucking Bucky, what are your thoughts on the quest for the Juju and sort of Riska and Mina's stuff i mean we did get that cool i know i keep saying girl boss we did get that cool moment that kylie henke did that rad dub of where Vriska jumps down into the into the uh dream into down where the juju is and it's like i don't fucking care what you think anymore like that the character that we get from parentheses the character development we get from parentheses Vriska is good i'm just I am trying to reconcile, like, what we've already said. Because we said Mina was gonna have some character development. And 
Briska obviously already had, so we've already, and we have said that Vriska is going to not perma die. We are going to bring her back with our with our new retcon thing. So the question is, if Vriska is going to get her character development, then are we proceeding with? keeping parentheses Vriska around and having her be developed here? Or do we modify this to avoid having parentheses Vriska? Because I think we were going back and forth on that, if I recall correctly. So, like, my, my biggest question is, like, I want to make sure we're still doing what we're intending to do thematically while uh, fulfilling what we already kind of set up for here you mean like because we, we well parentheses risk it basically like exists up until the moment where they they retcon everything i i mean that's you could portray parentheses risk up until the moment of the retcon and then it's going to have been like retroactively risk Ret- retroactively was it never happened so exactly well no june does June and like Roxy so and Terezi, I think. Wait, fuck! How does she get the powers then? Because we, because that causes a paradox, unfortunately. Like that. That that's okay though. We we can have paradoxes. That's fine. Well, what? Uh, because this is outside of like. Paradox no, this causes a, a meta narrative paradox because if she goes back and erases the the uh, the thing that caused her to get the powers with the ability to erase things. Then she, no, 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 no that's but fine. Then, so then that's she fine. couldn't have gone back to erase it. So she could, so it couldn't have been erased. So it would have happened. So she does get the power. So she can go back and erase it. Like that's a circular. Pro- that's a problem with the logic of the story we're telling. That's not a problem with, like, that's not paradox space. That's like genuine, well, actually, an issue. You're, you're saying that because the, the inciting incident that led to June having a reason to go back. No, doesn't happen I'm saying anymore. that. The person who what are you saying? This is the person who confusing. gets the thing that allows her to have the powers in the first place is going to never have existed to get the powers. Oh yeah, that that's what we were talking about. Where that just kind of like has happened anyway, and that isn't explained. Like that's a function of we're like stepping outside of the story to some extent. Because I have a feeling we are kind of on a very similar but sort of three different pages about how it will work. I, I think that we're pretty consistent about how we think it should work. The question is just how do you resolve the paradox or do you resolve it? Like, I'm of the mind that, nah, just fucking it happened and, like, that isn't explained. It's a, it's a mystery of the fact that we are clearly in a story that that serves to highlight the fact that we're in a story. Um Okay, but I want an answer, Janaya. (laughs) I was going to say, I know it's going to piss off the people that need to have, like, literally everything explained, but I'm not one of those people, so... It could be addressed in canon, like, (laughs) Vriska could be like, wait, how did I get... Or there could be some kind of... Because there are stories with uh, multiverse stuff that have, like, partial memories of, like, what happened in other things. It could be, like, you know, Zero Escape... Zero uh, Time Dilemma or whatever that game series is, where it's like you kind of share memories with what happened after a universe changes. Again, this is all fucking... (laughs) I feel like I need to get like a a blackboard out to explain Um, this. What were you saying, Buggy? (laughs) It does also have a meta-narrative explanation. We already read the story where Vriska Mm. went and did that. It's already written down. Yes, yes. And it's already... That's how June would explain it, I feel like. I, I like that. I, I like having it lean into the meta narrative of it. Like, yeah. why is the juju there? Because we know that the juju is there because we read it, and that's what mm. you know. That's where it is in our memory. So why would it be anywhere else? I guess worst case, if in Bucky's case, like if that is a paradox, if that if how we're doing I mean, it, it is, would create that, that paradox that we do that. want to resolve. We could just say like, oh well, June comes from. She she has memories of before that, ergo, she can just find it again right away or something. Um, I don't know. I like that. I like that discussion. 
It's very cool. I, I like the meta narrative thing that Bucky's proposing where it's like, it doesn't really get explained in universe. The explanation is like us as the reader. And like, honestly, I, I kind of like pissing off the people that want to have everything be like rigorously defined down to the last, like, you know, bolt on every piece of machinery because like, yeah, that's very antithetical you to how I like Shania, tell they have stories. To not, it, so... it, it's canon that they don't have noses because they're not depicted with noses. <laughs> and it's canon because we can see uh-huh, it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> right. Exactly. 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 We're ears. <laughs> um, right. 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 There's uh, or arms in some cases. <laughs> there is. I, I think you I, I think we do risk p- pissing people off. But then again, like who yeah. fucking cares? It's it's our. I mean, we've already rewriting. done that with yeah. other decisions we've made, yes. including apparently the decision to do this at all. So, right. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it it would be better to do this because in the rewrite, I have passages written where Aradia explains basically point blank by demonstrating to Dave how time travel works. Like she is a mentor to him in how time travel functions, and what's interesting is. Through them, what I've written, you can see them have, like, different opinions on time travel because Aradia is like, yeah, so what I did was just basically make a bunch of time clones to, like, uh, die for me and martyr themselves. And I just did that hundreds and hundreds of times, and it was cool. <laughs> and Dave is like, um, that's fucked up. I'm actually going to adhere to, like, the timeline stuff and, and do a intricate dance and never have a doomed Dave ever because that horrifies me. Hmm. because they they both have different opinions on death. But through that rigorous explanation, when we finally break those rules with June and say, like, no, you can have a paradox, actually. Um, paradoxes no longer create doomed timelines because of June's powers. Right. Um, so June just rewrote the story, yes. and it is the way it is. So, you know, exactly. And it is the way it is, and that kind of feels weird. And you can even have characters be like, wait, so, June, how do you have the retcon powers? Because you said Vriska got them for you, but Vriska's been alive now. And June can just be like, oh, well, she wasn't before, and that's when she gave me the powers. And everyone could be like, June, that makes no fucking She's sense. Like, and June could be like, I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. What about me being able to go into the script of the story we're in and edit it <laughs> makes sense? And they're like, you did what? Yes. <laughs> and that does feel a little bit like the the trope of a wizard did it where it's just like hand waved but i don't think i don't think it is functionally but it's not there are there rules are no we're adults adhering to, on this planet there are only children and they raise each other just fine <laughs> they're raised the by thing monsters is, yeah like the a wizard did it explanation is fine if you're doing it consciously. Yeah, if you see the wizard what, do it, what its implications are. Yes, if you, you, you you're watching the, the wizard being do June it. and Roxy is like has stars in her eyes. Pay right full now. attention anyway. to the woman behind the um, curtain. She's, she needs the moral support. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it is kind of a Wizard of Oz thing where it's like June for a split second here in our rewrite is being like, okay, gotta uh, gotta reform reality real quick. And yeah, we have it, so it's a know. limited power. So you know you can't just write Lord English out of existence. That would be right. It, it's yeah. There's certain like, I mean, there's certain limitations as far as like it taking a certain amount of energy to do. And like we've we've shown that with all of the having to redo things because Riska keeps doing some shit. Or like, you know, there might be something that's so like integral to the story that erasing it requires rewriting so much that you like the whole yeah. thing wouldn't have happened or something like that right, you know, right. there's ways to to reason around that we got so. kind of lost in the weeds around the um time travel stuff that's fine or not the time travel but the retcon stuff that that's okay we we it, it warrants explanation i think for the both of viewers and no, us it's a good discussion um let's talk now about something that well, so the first two points were Lord English's quest, which we were fine with, and Vriska and Mina's quest, which we were fine with. Basically, I think the the changes we would make would be putting these things in a different context now, which is fine. Let's talk about something that I think we are not okay with: the sprite squareds, or the sprites squared. What? It, which one would it be? The sprite squareds or the sprites squared? Who cares? Um, I plan <laughs> to alternate between the two based on random chance. They're, both so. of them are hard to uh, <laughs> pronounce. It's kind of a tongue twister. Um, the Spress Squareites. Spress Squareites. 
<laughs> there are basically there are uh, let's there are two main ones. There's one that I think we can just ignore, which is GCAT Taver Sprite, uh, who is a joke, and this sucks. <laughs> like I, I don't know how else to say this, but like. I think it's great that, like, you know, Tavros got a second wind because this is Hussey's moment of being like, all right, you guys want these characters, so here you go. Tavros can be a cat boy. And He's a horrifying abomination it sucks. now. Aren't it you sucks, happy? though. He's allergic to himself. That is, <laughs> that is, inc- like, okay, I get that's, it is funny that he's allergic to himself, but it's also a little bit fucked it's up. So- like a little bit say, fucked up in a real way. Horrifying. If you have yeah. <laughs> like allergies to animals, you know how horrible and immediate the effects are. And just imagining that all the time sucks. Um, I'm not going to say that, you know, in Hussey's silly webcomic, he was in some serious manner making <laughs> some existential oh, no. horrible no, no, abomination. No, 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 no. It was a joke. No, that was, um, it was a joke. Which is why we're going to skip it. It's a joke. <laughs> the next one is, uh, 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 let's start with, Jaspro Sprite and then move into Devepita because I think we ha- we all are on the same page about Jaspro's but perhaps not oh, about Devepita. Um I hate or Dave Peta or however what are you saying about I hate that real people use Homsa character names as their name and then I make associations that have nothing to do with the comic and that's all I have to say. Oh no! <laughs> Shout out to whoever Bucky is talking you about. No, um, <laughs> audience doesn't. <laughs> I do, I do, I, I. Um, yeah. <laughs> shout out to that person who, if Don't. you're in the audience, hello. Um, <laughs> you know who you are. You know what you've done. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll start talking about uh, Jasper's sprite, and I just want to say, the sprite spares just because how we've written the story can't exist. However, right, because they're the game over timeline. Right. People. However, they yeah. can still exist in that. Like Dave and Nepeta can share a Sprite now. So, right. I, I, I don't even know if this is worth talking about actually, because like they can't exist existentially. Honestly, like, so we've, we've set up, we've set up conditions whereby, there are no, like, there's no ghosts of the game over people. They're literally the same people, and they're not dead. Um, so, like, to introduce the the squared sprites, we would need, like, some kind of convoluted, like, we'd have to think of another way to introduce them. And, like, why? Like, what, yeah, at this, especially at this late point, like, what are we adding to the story? Like, I think this is one of those things where we're just, making up fairly major mm. deviation from the original comic. I completely forgot they the can just not exist. other Sprite Squared, which is uh, Arqueous Sprite Squared. I didn't forget Arqueous Sprite. <laughs> I just wasn't mentioning um, him. We So I think that there... I, I, I hate to say this, but Jasper's Sprite, in my opinion, is narratively pointless and also sucks. So... I'm fine with saying we'll do away with Jasper Sprite. I know a lot of people are attached to Jasper Sprite. I don't, um, what's yeah, the word? Care? Care? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to uh, worry about that. Um, if you like them, fine. This is another case of like, if you like it, it's still in Homestuck. We have no power to delete Homestuck. We're just remaking it better. Uh, which is a different thing entirely. So, you know, Jazz Pro Sprite is still out there. You can still ship them with, you know, Jane uh, or whatever. Actually, I'm blog. going to care. come to every single one of your houses and forcibly install the home, install the Homestuck Slur Replacement Project on your computer, <laughs> and you will like it. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> we, have your, uh, we have your IP addresses I mean, from the views on this video. that doesn't do anything about Jazz Pro Sprite, though. That's true. Just all of the slurs. <laughs> <laughs> no, the new, the new Homestuck... The Jasper's <laughs> replacement project. <laughs> Actually, nobody can have Nepeta the, the but hot me. New plug-in. Oh my god! That's right. funny. The bu- <laughs> Replace it with Bucky. Um, I, I'm fine with saying, you know, fuck uh, Jasper's. I think that you yeah, can no. still have uh, Equius sharing a sprite with Hal. I think that's still. A good culmination of well, their... Well, Equius is still super dead because we uh, we killed him yes. during... Yes, he still gets oh, turned into... Wait, 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 wait. 
Mm -hmm. All of this hinges on Gamzee having the severed heads of the people killed during murder stuck in a fridge. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and that uh, probably oh not going to go with that. What a convoluted thing. What a okay, what cool. A, what so a, okay. none of the sprites exist. No, and also none Nepeta's of the sprites alive. Exist. Yeah, so Devepeta can't them, exist at this squares. point unless live uh, Nepeta jumps in there, and I'm not letting her do that. No, no that fuck would be horrible. that. Nepeta deserves, Nepeta deserves better, better than that. better than to be fused with to Dave. to be merged with Dave for the rest of her life. I think that... <laughs> so I do want to say... There are two threads that I do want to continue into the rewrite that were started by Devepita and Arqueus, which is Arqueus having his own body, which I think, you know, tossing him into a sprite, I, th I think still is good. Well, Whoever again, happens the to severed be inside heads, that. There won't, there won't be the severed heads. Right. Like, uh, I think the Gamzee we're writing isn't really no, about no, that no. kind of thing. So. so there will be an open sprite that Hal can go into. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Um, there can be we something made else in there. Hal, Maybe a bird his own person yeah, who has a planet in the game, didn't we? In a yeah, robot and the uh, so uh, robot that's body. Also sure so we, no Arqueus The sprites have to be okay. like yeah, completely yeah, retooled. Well, right, right, right. Yeah. Whatever, whatever happens, I would like to see Hal achieve some kind of personhood and also individuality from, from Dirk. So that's fine. And the other thread I want to continue is, and this is kind of a personal thing. I don't know how mm -hmm. you guys will feel about it, but I think that Dave and Nepeta should be friends. Um, sure. In some capacity, because I think that Devepita Sprite, at first I didn't like them, but as I came to understand them more, I was like, oh, I get this now, because Nepeta's crutch is like her crippling fear of actually reaching out and having friends, which mirrors Dave's crippling fear, which is, uh, having all of his friends reject and abandon him. But they both have a... I think they're good matches for each other. But now that Nepeta is alive on the meteor, she and Dave can sort of hit it off and become... You know, especially because they have they both have something to mourn. Because Dave and Rose have just, like, lost their friends. Um, They are separated from them. Dave lost... Who he was... Uh, Oh, shoot. I, I'll edit that out. <laughs> Dave lost one of his... In the rewrite, Dave loses someone he's close to. That's probably way too much of a hint, but, you know, whatever. Um, he, he, who he's close to now in the rewrite, I should say. And <laughs> um, really, so they could... Really trying to preserve that spoiler. Yeah, I, I really don't want... I mean, people already fucking guessed it in the Twitter thread that I made, but... Yeah. Um, I also no one guessed Friska <laughs> that she was gonna <laughs> die on the meteor and murder stuck instead. But anyway, yeah, I, I like that thread. So instead of the sprites, we can just have like actual characterization instead of putting them in a magic seed. Uh, I don't know. I, I like I, that for the sprites. I, I like them say... not existing. Eridan and Solix getting fused together was fucking hilarious. It. I I understand <laughs> their implications of, like... Like, I thought it was funny in whatever, 2011, 2013. Now I sort of do balk at aerosol as a concept in general because it's like, hey, remember that rich prick who bullied you in grade school, like, right through the whole thing? What if you <laughs> did want to fuck yeah. him, though? What, well, not <laughs> only that, like... What if you did want to fuck him, but he never yes! got better? <laughs> he's still the exact right. same, like, openly fascist, genocidal, like, yes. mean asshole. But he's also like, ooh, woo, I'm so sad no one loves me. And it's like, I can fix him. I can fix him. <laughs> uh, it's like, I mean, like, allowed, I this guess. This is just... This is just how I talk about Irania, but unironically. Yeah, that's why I let you fix him. Um, what if Irania was trans mask? Irania or Aradia? Yeah. Both. I, Both. I mean, do you not? know my opinion on that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what if uh, there was a joke someone made? Uh, I don't remember where. I think it was in the YouTube comments that were like, um, I think it would be funny if everyone in the comic was trans except for Caliborn <laughs> and he, he becomes a minority and he like can mirror that sort of <sighs> thread that's going on right now in, in uh, political See, I discourse. I do really like trans femme Cali and trans mask Caliborn, but Caliborn being cis 
and Callie not being cis and literally everybody around him not being cis is really fucking funny. Well, so, yes, I think it would be funny if, uh, well, we'll get into that later. (laughs) We can get into, like, gender shit soon. But I think the to finish up with the Sprite Squares, my thesis is there is good character development that happens due to them. But since they will not exist, we will do that elsewhere now. Yeah, we can just um, take the good elements and transplant them to somewhere else. Now, I do want to get something out of my system. Uh, can we dunk on fucking Jasper Sprite for a little bit? <laughs> like, I fucking hate that character. I don't think about Jasper Sprite, like, ever. I hate, I hate Jasper well, Sprite. I hate what, you I know, hate what she's talking actually, about. Actually, I have this character. really, really great idea. So what I think we should do is we should establish that mm. the sprites don't age. And then what we should do is we should move forward about 20 years. And then what we should do is we should have uh, that, that same you. character who hasn't <laughs> aged date like a 40-year-old. I think that would be top-notch bonus content for our podcast. What do you guys think? Fucking, fucking. I was like, the gang the very, the, epilogues. <laughs> the very beginning, I was like, wait, wait, what? But we just said the sprite stone again. And then I realized immediately what you that were doing. Was, listen, listen, I know there's God. a lot of like deliberately inflammatory, <laughs> shitty things designed to piss people off that happened at Homestuck 2. I know that, but like. That's the funny thing, though. I can't even prove Ugh. that that was designed Isn't to piss it... people off because I. I don't know. I, I don't know. The, I that's no the funny idea. thing. The funny thing, the funny thing about HS2 is like it's so reader hostile. It's like, it, it, but it keeps tripping over its own dick with like, oh shit, we forgot the implications of this character's age. Ugh, and like, so it's it's <laughs> I mean... insulting you while it's tripping on rakes. Hey guys, it's Future JoJo. So I'm going to be real with you. For the next two and a half minutes, we ranted about Homestuck 2 in a way that was like so depressing and horrible that I decided to cut it. So, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. This is not a Homestuck 2 podcast. Uh, maybe I'll release the rant someday. The famous Homestuck 2 rant. Um, but for your patience, uh, here's me tapping on my cheek to make the megalovania. Here it goes. There you go. <laughs> Fuck this. All right, Yay. we're back. Uh, sorry, we got we're possessed back. by demons. <laughs> yeah. And we got overtaken and sort of had to fight them off inside of our bodies. The spirit um, of Homestuck 2 spoke <laughs> through us for a minute. Yes. You don't want to hear what that was about. Instead of talking about all that shit, let's talk about uh, the Alpha and Beta kids meeting. Because I think there's a lot of sweet shit that happens. Because this is the time they meet in earnest instead of in in the game over stuff. And critically, I think there are a couple of uh, there are a couple of things that happen in canon that are nice, and there are a couple of things that I think do not happen in canon that would be nice. And at the end of Homestuck Act Six, there is a controversial thing, which is like there's just so much fucking talking and nothing really happening, and a lot of people dislike that. I like it in a way. I think the execution was bad, but I do like the idea of, like, a lull before the final battle where everyone can sort of tie up their loose ends. I think it could be done something somewhere other than, like, the the final hours of the, the entire comic. But I like the conversation that Dave and Dirk have. I like the conversation that, uh, you know, Terezi and Vriska have as friends. I like the conversations that uh, Roxy, Rose, and Kanaya have. Those are very sweet. And I think we could expand that to, you know, June talks to Jane about their shared transness because they're both, th- that is the parallel of this narrative. And I think Jade could also talk to Jake because, like, Jake is one of the only characters who never talks to the beta kids in any extended thing, which sucks because he was, like, connected to both Jade and John in the original comic, where he's, like, writing letters to them. Mostly to Jade, but also to John at that one time. Um, and also, Jake is, like, what are they, what is What is up with Jake in this part? You know? Like, he's just kind of, like, oh, he becomes well, a joke. Exists. But he, he becomes exists. a joke in, like, a real way. Like, the, the story thinks he's a joke. What is up with that? 
Oh, well, see, Jojo, uh, it's funny when gay men are effeminate. I mean, that's that's objectively true, but I, I can't imagine that, you know, that's the only reason that Jake is, like, treated like a fucking asshole. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the answer is know. that I Andrew just... Hussey wrote homophobic things into his work. Like, I don't have another answer for you. Yeah, yeah I, I don't. He, I don't love it. He didn't like his his one bisexual character. Or is well, Jake gay? I'm going remember. to emphatically say Jake right? is bi and not elaborate at all and move on. Fair yeah. enough. That's that's um, completely fine. I actually think that uh, having bad experiences with women doesn't traumatize you into being gay all the time. Maybe it can, but yeah, that's that's super I don't think that's a unilateral thing, works, even actually. if you do like <laughs> that. Uh, if that happened to you, I'm not going to argue with you, but um, I prefer not to apply that interpretation to fictional characters. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like, actually, I, just to speak on that really quickly, like, um, a, as someone who was, like, deeply traumatized by the uh, gender of person that they are attracted to, um, my sexuality didn't, like, change because of that. Like, I just still like women, even though one abused me. Like, that's not how that fucking works. What the fuck? <laughs> I, I'm sad that that's, like, an interpretation. That sucks. It's such a weird interpretation. Like, it's not even, like, it, it doesn't even come across as, like, well, I have these bad experiences, so I'm, like, I have trauma to process. It's just, like, well, I just I don't think like... logically that because Jake was abused by two girls, he must not like them anymore. But also, he's trans femme. I've right. seen that in concert sometimes. But no, I. you know what it really reminds me of? It really reminds me of uh, the political movement of uh, transphobes who decided to call themselves lesbians and say that they, it was the oh, term yeah. is political lesbian. They would call themselves lesbians and mm -hmm. refuse to date men, but they were not sexually attracted to women. And they would like explicitly say that this isn't a like doubting people. This is a political stance that they that they made and told people that they made. And what they're yeah, that was really fucking weird. And like that, it's the same thing. It's well, I was so traumatized by males that I can't possibly ever engage with <laughs> one ever again. That's some turf shit. Yeah, it's turf shit. It is. It is. Out, it's like second wave turfism, if I recall correctly. It's fucked um, up. Turfism that sucks. Oh, but so like it's it's man. it's. I mean, that's why I refer to them as transphobes, is because I'd rather lead with that than. But like, I personally do not believe that the solution to how homophobic Jake is handled, or the how homophobic the story is with regards to how it treats Jake. I don't think that the response to that is to curve hard into, uh, well, he just never likes. He he's just so super duper gay, super duper homosexual gay that this is fine. Bucky, I like how you said at the top. Uh, I'm just gonna say he's bi and not elaborate, and then you definitely <laughs> did elaborate. Lied, I lied. But you were correct. You were correct entirely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I think that Jake's treatment. I've seen an analysis of this where th it basically came down to, and this is a little fucked up, but it kind of rings true in terms of regular Homestuck. Not in a good way, but in like a, okay, that makes sense. I can see why they made that cho that horrible choice now way. He goes nuts, and he's a big reason why Game Over is a failure. Uh, the Game Over project by Arania, because he goes, uh, he, he unlocks his power, basically. And one analysis I saw was, well, he needs to be treated like a cream puff and like kept down because that power is dangerous. And that's like, that sucks, but I understand what th th that I, I don't like that. I don't like that. That's a, a, a logical interpretation of what happens. It's possible to understand like where the story is going and completely disagree. Yeah. With it. Like you, just because you understand. Right. It, you have to be like, yeah, that seems like uh, a good decision to make. No, because it, it just it just makes it seem like due to this guy's circumstances, he's just kind of we have to insult him. <laughs> yeah no and that I'm sucks not a fan of it no because like vriska um really just berates him in a really not even vriskerly way like it's <laughs> it's it's cringe it is yeah. like the treatment of jake in in uh in canon is at the end is cringe it's like 
he he fights joke characters. He is a joke himself. He wears, you know, Lara Croft pants. It sucks. We literally put Vriska in the position Jake was in. And I think it'll work there because, like, Jake, uh, like, taking on the felt and, like, not even being able to take on Clover or whatever. No, sorry, Clover gets separated and goes to Carcat. Uh, um... And there's sort of like a joke going on where like Jake is facing off against every single other member of the felt. And those ones were like, J- like Jack Noir managed to kill, uh, or I think it was Spades, like managed to kill, uh, all of those felt members, but Jake can't even handle it. Meanwhile, the one felt member that nobody can kill Clover because he's so lucky was eventually taken out by Karka. And even though he doesn't look badass, we as the audience know that that was actually super badass of Karka. And like, and, like, just the series, like, that, and then Vriska calls Jake joke, and then it's just yeah, thing, it's after, thing after thing after thing, and it, it, bu- it, yeah. it builds up. But if we have that one-off thing be the culmination of Vriska going, you know what, sometimes I don't have to do the important thing. I think that works a lot better. And then, like, I don't know. It's just so weird that, like, Jake is... He's hyped up as being able to be super powerful if he could only sort of, like, get his mental shit together, ends up being pushed into it, and then is understandably traumatized by it. Then that's erased. Uh, and he's still... I don't know. I just... There's something about pages and the uh, both <laughs> okay, <Dirk>. pages, <laughs> of which there are two, uh... There's only two of them, yeah, exactly. and weirdly, there were only eleven dance ancestors. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah we uh, we should address that at some point. But yeah, go on, Bucky. <laughs> that discrepancy. Again, it's just like this. I. It feels like it's an insecurity. Like it's something that the author. It, it, to me, it feels like either something Andrew Hussey is afraid of becoming. <laughs> maybe I know I'm like doing psychoanalysis yeah. on Homestuck now, and like. Lay, roll with me for a minute uh that because that particular like whiny like not like knobbly need re- reedy voiced effeminate like n- not enough of a man failed in a, in several different ways isn't actually very macho isn't actually very muscular talks a big talk but can never follow through like I know that a lot of that is, like, inference that you get from Homestuck and not things that are actually depicted, um, but, especially the physical descriptors, but, like, you you get this sense uh, that, like, there's something about that type of man that Andrew Hussey dislikes and or is possibly afraid of because of the way he keeps treating his characters who are like that. If I could, uh, and, if I could do some psychoanalysis, yeah. my idea, this is my thesis, is... Hussey was like, uh, I included a lesbian couple, so I should probably include a gay couple. And then he included Dirk Jake, which grossed him out so much that he, like, made fun of them forever after. Like, he made them oh, horrible. God. Uh, that is <sighs> hate all of this. very bad faith. This yeah. is, like, the worst faith interpretation. Yeah, this is per- so... Yeah, I'm... <laughs> but, I don't know. My... It's funny, though. My point is that, like... It's if you're, we maybe it's because we and, like Hussey backed himself into a corner of like characters who share a class, share personality traits, and so Jake had to be similar to Tavros, and only Tavros. Um, but uh, and also Aridin too, because we're relating to the other Hope players. But like, I don't know if we don't. I don't think if we want to. I don't know exactly how we're going to fix that, but I think part of it involves taking a hard look at, like, we did, a, we did, we did Tavros a bit better, I think, this time. So I think we can do Jake a bit, bit better and just figuring out how we've reconstructed that to make it uh, work better. Also, uh, just so I'm not completely operating in, like, bad faith, I do want to say that, like, the reason that I interpret Jake as bisexual is that he exhibits attraction to men and women in the comic. Right. I mean, that is, right. yeah, that that's subjective. <laughs> the, it's, it's the, like, we, in order to read Jake as not being bi, you have to either do the incredibly bad faith, like he's traumatized out of his bisexuality, or you have to just say like, oh, well, it was all comphead, which is like, 
I hate that as just like an escape hatch for like, well, I want to headcanon this God. character as, you know, uh, gay or lesbian. So I'm going to say that any evidence that they've experienced uh, attraction to a different gender is just content. That sucks it's so like, much. That's, it's, the, it's the stupidest, <laughs> like laziest, you know, what actual evidence do you have for this? The answer is none. So why do you have to be like that? I, I don't love that. This is the most I've ever talked hey. about Jake, like, ever, so that's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. It, also, a turf allegedly coined yes, it, so do yes. it that way, uh, Yes, the, the person that coined it was, in fact, a turf. That is true. Sure is convenient to be able to write off your attraction to trans women as compulsory heterosexuality because you don't believe she's a woman, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's always good. Like, uh, also, like, <sighs> fuck, I, I had a point. Oh, wait, I said good when I meant bad. I do that sometimes. Um, oh no, uh, PSA from, from, I'm not even that fucking old. I'm not even that fucking old. I just try to read shit by people who have been (laughs) around longer than me. But, uh, like, shit changes. It's, like, genuinely, if Jake, if we got a story about a man who thought he was bi for a long time, and then he woke up one day and he was like, you know what? Actually, I don't. My attraction to women has faded, and I consider myself gay now because that's where I am. That, in my that life. sounds like a Dark that's Souls not text. Bad. Attraction to women faded. <laughs> you have to get. You have to get more insights. That's how that happens. <laughs> I mean, you can discover different aspects of your sexuality. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Throughout your life, that's completely fine. Yeah. Yeah, like, throughout my life, I have identified as a heterosexual cis woman, a bisexual cis woman, a bisexual non-binary person, a bisexual trans man, a gay trans man, a bisexual non-binary person again, but in a different (laughs) way. And now I identify as a butch lesbian. Like It's uh, fine. I identify as uh, an attack helicopter. Oh fuck you! <laughs> I just Sorry, I just realized I was that demisexual sucks. like three months ago. So yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's weird. Uh, sexuality is weird. It's, it's weirder weird. when you factor in what your gender is. Yes. And the original Homestuck was not equipped to no. address that at all. So how, so fan interpretations of those things are things I yeah. welcome. But if but operating out of the text and saying it definitively says a certain thing. I wouldn't even say it definitively says a certain thing, but I have my interpretation. And there's a certain group of folks that do homestuck analysis of the of the vein of, you know, asserting that the text says this definite, absolutist thing, and that is the only interpretation that's valid. And discussion isn't allowed anymore. And I I don't like that because like I'm a big fan of like, you know death of the author style interpretation where you you can kind of play around with it and the implications of it and read different things into it. Yeah, no. I mean there is there is a right answer as far as what the author actually intended. My point is it doesn't super matter. No. Like, yeah, I I think that I would go a step further and say like I would call my own interpretation style gonzo interpretation where you can kind of just make anything if you as long as you have textual interpretations. However, there's a flip side to that where, okay, if anything goes, then also everything kind of is, you know, tentative. Like, you know, my interpretation who, or or even this Homestuck, you know, rewritten interpretation of Homestuck isn't necessarily true. Um, I mean, it's our interpretation of yeah, it and our it is our collective... version of the work. Like, it's not... We're explicitly changing stuff for one thing. No, we there is no rightness value at all in right. my in my thing. You know, you you can say, well, uh, not like objective moral truth. I mean, no, there no, is no, a, no, no, no. If you wanted to argue like what was the author's original intent, there's a right answer, which we might not know. But like again, my point is, it doesn't really matter. Right. which I think you'd agree with me on. Yes, uh, like Bucky said, you know, if you want to interpret Jake as. Uh, gay and only likes women because of compet that would be that's no less right or wrong however it does reveal something about you yeah, i think exactly. <laughs> um that was my point yeah and that is <laughs> that is kind of the crux here of what does the author's interpretation of their own work reveal about them or what do the details that they didn't think about like characters ages or races or implied whatever 
in, uh, reveal about them. And, you know, analyzing that is an important part of, I think, uh, I'll say this. I don't think Homestuck was written with many passes over. Does that make sense? Like, it was I mean, basically I, I a think first it was, draft. Yeah, like it was it A was very well-polished serially. first draft. Yes. Right. And that's fine. However, it yeah, does, there course. are so many kernels of that. We've we've come over so many of them, like Rufio uh, with um, uh, Dante Bosco with the Grand High Blood and his lineage and uh, the 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 culture of you know Black Louisiana and uh, religious stuff. Uh, I don't know. It, it's just all this accidental stuff. And if you lean into that, you revealing something about yourself and your interpretation. Again, we're not trying to sand out the edges here we're just trying to make it so like this comic is a readable and b has themes that are consistent and i don't know we got kind of lost in the weeds here with jake um we got sucked in by his gravitational pull yeah that's um, how that happens we, we got engaged in the help yeah. field and it turned all turned to bullshit to bring it back to the what i said at the beginning which is the alpha and beta kids meeting i just think it would be nice if they met more yeah, uh, I, I, I think Jane and June would have a lot to talk about. I think Jake and Jade would have a lot to talk about. I think that a lot of people would butt heads, and I think that would make... Mm-hmm. I, basically, what I wanted to say was, I think it would be more interesting if there was more conflict during that time. Like, perhaps mm-hmm. June is maybe excited to meet Jane, but they don't really get along or mm-hmm. something like that, and they have to resolve that, and that's sort of like yeah, a mini interpersonal sure. thing uh, near the end. Stuff yeah, like that. I don't... I don't really have anything to add to what you've already said. Like, I mean, I agree with you. I think a lot of that is procedural as far as like how you choose to write it. But like, yeah, no, that's good. I'm fine with that idea. Like other than that. Yeah. Fucking Jake. That little bastard. (laughs) I think it would be funny if uh, I think we've talked about this before, but if Jake was confused about like what being bisexual even was (laughs) like, he's like, Oh, I, I like men, so I'm gay now, right? And Drake's like, no, that's not how it works. You're still attracted to women, right? And he's like, well, uh, Dirk, is this a trick? Are you trying to trick me into saying something bad? I, I don't want to. <laughs> and Dirk's like, no. I say just... <laughs> I'm, I'm gay for men, and I'm also gay for women. No, I, I wish Jake. there was a word for that, but yes. I can't quite put my oh, finger on it. <laughs> goodness, I just had a crackerjack idea. What if there was a word for which gender you're attracted to? <laughs> there is aren't you gay yes i'm gay i'm i'm frequently gay i'd like to keep a good disposition at all times <laughs> well don't you that okay all right that one of the key points for pointing out how jake is actually very smart and like knows what he's doing yeah and he's not actually uh very stupid is when he's talking to calibor and, and he pulls basically that yes but he knows what gay means and Calibor <laughs> okay. only knows the happy definition i like jake as a himbo but i also like jake as a himbo much like jane or jade because jade is not a, a like a, a herbo we've talked about that jake is a himbo but in a similar style to jade because he's like he doesn't know he might not know what gay means but he in the rewrite he doesn't know what gay means but he does know like <laughs> nuclear physics. <laughs> and, I mean, Jade is not Jade's not like a stupid naive character. No, Jade Jade in the rewrite especially is not uh yeah, we, we like decided she, explicitly she's very to not... earnest. She mm-hmm. is a very earnest and sincere character, which some people misinterpret as naivety, but she's not actually naive. Yes. Uh, I think Jake, on the other hand, would be incredibly naive because he is A never seen the mainland and B has only experienced like life through just the shittiest movies <laughs> right um, he's, he's naive but not stupid that's his deal yeah he's okay. like uh he also doesn't know i feel like jake would he would not know what words mean some words but he would know like complex calculations like he he's very like how do i put this he's a little bit like a cheerful sherlock from the the the, the show sherlock where he makes all these deductions and smart things in his head, but he's socially inept. But instead of being a brooding fuckhead who like shoots his walls, he's he's very cheerful and he's nice and he shoots his walls. Um, and he's like, or or uh, he's like Dirk, I can tell you're a little nervous because uh, I I notice these 
26 <laughs> textbook signs of nerves. Your heart is beating at a faster rate, which I felt when I shook your hand, when I felt your pulse. Your hands are clammy as well. Your sweat, your brow is sweating too. And Dirk is like, this is not making me any less nervous. Please stop. <laughs> um, I don't right. know. I, I love Jake. Fucking, I do. We got sucked in again. God damn it! I do. I. This is literally the most I've talked about Jake like the Jake ever episode. in my life. <laughs> the, the I gay don't. Episode. I not that I have anything against Jake or like against people that like Jake. It's just a character I cared. I so hard do I not. This care is the about peak Jake. of Jake interest in your in your entire life, Janaya. No, this is the peak of Jake engagement in my yes. entire life. Like <laughs> engagement. In, yeah, <laughs> nailed it. Um, fucking. Let's uh, let's fucking finish this episode. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we started out with Lord English. So aptly, let's let's talk about Calliope because I think Calliope also has one of the well executed arcs. When we when last we left her off, she had been her brother had tragically witnessed her death, which is very traumatic for him. Um, and she is now in the dream bubbles, sort of. Just kind of putting around, not knowing what to do. And everyone else is looking for her alt self, who is like this the key of, of winning against Lord English. So she feels like uniquely shitty because she doesn't have any alternate dead selves except for one who everyone likes more than her. And she's basically just like talking to Jade and Roxy in the dream bubbles, just trying to like chill. Um, and I like that. Quick question. I uh, again, uh, I because I don't remember exactly. How does our reinterpretation of the retcon affect uh, all of this? Um, I don't think it does. I think in this case, uh, she was dead so from before. In, yes. Right? In original yes. Homestuck, John does not affect Caliborn and Callie's timeline much, and I think that right. should hold over in here because oh, yeah, no, I agree. I think it would be a good idea for John, maybe, or sorry, June, not to know like what is the central cause. He does not know that Caliborn is the central cause until it's too late that she cannot use her powers anymore. She's not omniscient, like she. No, no, no. She no, has no. the ability to to edit the story itself, but like only within the realm of what she she knows. We even talked about like having Terezi basically be the guide for what she yeah. has to actually change. So she's like, the she's mind of the outfit, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Very on the nose. And then, you know, June is like, all right, I don't know. So, yeah, they, they would be untouched. It would it would go down the same. Caliborn would kill Calliope and then predominate, et cetera, et cetera. And there would be that alternate universe, Cali and Caliborn. And um, I think it would be, I don't know. I like this. Uh, I like her. I like Cali being, like, sort of needing to be shown her own worth. I think that's a very relatable experience, especially in like that. That's very, re- that's, that's like universally relatable. Just being alone and, and feeling horrible about it, uh, feeling lonely and worthless. Uh, and then, you know, being shown in some way that she is worth something because maybe Roxy could be more proactive about like trying to find her. And she's like, or, or because she's one of the only people who can talk to Callie being a void player. So Callie is trying to hide in the dream bubbles and stuff. So Roxy could like be more proactive and be like, Hey Callie, you haven't come around for like, you know, a couple months. What's wrong? And Callie's like, you, you, you noticed I was gone and stuff like that. That's very cute. Um, and then alt Calli- Calliope is, is like basically the polar opposite where she's just like, just exhausted, having a horrible time, just waiting for like other people to show up to fix things for her. Um, uh, I think her backstory could be explored more, and the explanation of where dead Caliborn went could also be fun. Um, I think what what my thesis is: this is worth having more details about it. That's that's what yeah. I think. That works. Cool. I'm- I, I agree with you. No notes. It's yeah, this is it's the good. Uh, I, <laughs> this is the episode of we go over things that we're mostly okay with and and get Except into a Sprite very Square. extended tangent about Jake. <laughs> yes, Bucky. What <laughs> but are yeah, thoughts? no, I'm fine with Calliope. Bucky's Bucky can take it from here. <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, basically same. Like, that that covers something that was hinted at in the comic and sort of executed, but yeah. wasn't executed I wanna in, see that. A, I wanna in write that. effective or genuine way, I guess. I want to have... Like, I want to have that, that. What's that flash called? Where it's, it's the someone made it on YouTube. It's a fake flash that's like alt Cali killing Caliborn and showing how she became that. I love that. I want that to be in our you our mean rewrite. the Act Eight Resolve, Resolve flash. Yeah. Resolve. That's the one. Yeah, that's Act Eight's like. Yeah, that is part of a much larger yeah. <laughs> story, but it is really good. Oh yeah, well, it is, isn't it? Read Act Eight and read watch Act Resolve. It's real good. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Also, follow-up. Read Caliborn Goes to Art School on AO3 oh, yes. and watch the <laughs> uh, the Game Over uh, reanimate. I know that we've, like, long past Game Over, but I think if I were going to grab something from mm-hmm. that, I would I would just fully take Teebs' extended ending. Yeah, it's real yeah. good. Uh, That's so good. Teeb is... Teeb is such... Man... We uh, we need to have a cherub episode with Teeb. Teeb's brain is fucking enormous, and Teeb is the only person <laughs> I know who like thinks she, about the cherubs. She really, really cares about the cherubs. We need to like, get Teeb in a way here. that I don't think I've seen anyone else, which is is pretty fucking cool. Yes, Teeb is like I think her partner would be the other person. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, Teeb. Teeb is a. Uh, we need to headhunt Teeb for this podcast. <laughs> Um, will be interesting schedule wise because she is uh, somewhere Does, yeah doesn't like, she live in like Europe? fucking Ireland I, I don't remember but she is Europe yeah she is she is in the oh. one of the European time zones <laughs> yeah. without without doxing did I tell yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. did I tell you guys about the the Africa woman no there was a woman who came into my store and she was like oh uh, I'm doing a special thing with some friends of mine from a church group where we're, we're making food oh, f- traditional from africa and me being an idiot and <sighs> and thinking of good faith i was like oh what part of africa <laughs> and she goes oh, no. oh you know the continent <laughs> oh my god and i wanted to like I feel like you oh. started to tell this story yeah, last night but got like sucks. distracted so i didn't actually hear it that's horrible and i um, hate it <laughs> that, that that vibe is like uh that's Riska. <laughs> that that is the Karen type of Riska. Wow. Oh my god. Yeah. But anyway, that's Africa cool. woman. Uh yeah, um, on that note. <laughs> sure is. God damn. Anyway, I I didn't was right okay. the goddamn. I I didn't know that people had such a weird interpretation of Riska cuz I always kind of thought of her as like uh, a high class bougie bitch. And that's why I liked her cuz like that kind of character like coming face to face with her stuff, but like people actually think people people think about her what she thought about Mind Fang. They were drink they drank her Kool Aid real hard. And I mean, been, there's a it's lot been of very weird fun to drag Vriska in this podcast. Oh yeah, no. I the thing is, I I love Vriska to death, but also Vriska is is horrible and needs to change a bunch of stuff. So yeah. Like, you remember you that know. thing I said about no interpretation is wrong? That's not true. Uh, if you think Vriska is a punk, you're in, you're <laughs> That's incorrect. The, uh, it's that uh, no fear, one fear uh, yeah. meme with uh, <laughs> no wrong interpretation. Vriska is a revolutionary hero. Yeah. One wrong interpretation. Yes. <laughs> uh, the other the other wrong interpretation is that Homestuck is good. That's um. that's a very loaded <laughs> sentence. Uh, that is a <laughs> joke has for anyone bits listening. And bad bits. That is not yeah, true. No, I, I, it's 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 too late, it's, Jojo. You're oh, mentioned. Oh no! It's my Twitter just fucking. I I lost all follower. You are going to lose subscriber. No, my subscriber. Well, Jojo, I can't believe you got suspended from Twitter again. Oh. This time it wasn't even a fight with Ben. Oh Trish. man, oh, that, was that was great. A, that was fucking epic. I think <laughs> I I gotta say he, he when he went Super Saiyan to fight me that was. <laughs> one of the moments that made a chill run up my spine. That was crazy. Yeah, his that's, hair. That's that's wow. the word I would use to describe the the tantrum that, that what if went through. <laughs> I'm gonna email right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh-huh. get on my fucking email funkmclovin at funkmclovinmusic at gmail dot com, and I'm gonna email Ben Shapiro and say, Hey, would you like to be on a podcast of a web comic you've never re- read? <laughs> We're and gonna, if he responds why, in positive, why? What? Why? We, all of us are transgender. Yeah, that would end horribly. What the fuck are you he, talking he would, about? He would be one of those motherfuckers who's like, you know, I have no problem with transgender people, but I just think it's rude to force June 
uh, as a headcanon. You know, I, I, it's fine if you want to have a headcanon, but forcing it down people's throats is just unacceptable. Oh my god, I hate this. Uh, I hate this so much. I, I would prefer that Ben Shapiro remain unaware of my existence, honestly. Yeah. Just generally speaking. <sighs> Let's say, hypothetically, you're stuck at home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I still like Caliborn having Ben Shapiro's voice. That's very funny. Oh, my God. That is. And Doc that Scratch is... having Jordan Peterson's. No. No, no, no. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. <laughs> is it because you voiced Doc Scratch? Maybe. <laughs> Yeah. I do like that people are starting to adopt the uh, my dear reader thing, even though he literally never says it in canon. Well, that's <laughs> cute. Uh, okay, this episode's over. This sucks. Yeah, fuck this shit. We, we have gotten <laughs> to the point where it's like uh, we have all descended into madness. We have lost all sanity points for now. We have to recuperate them. Uh, yeah, that's that's how podcasting works. Yeah. Um, you, you drain your sanity, and you have to you have to do uh, one long rest to recover it. It's like play to yeah. the dark. I think that uh, I think that the next one might be like the penultimate episode. The penultimate or the actual final episode? The penultimate. Because the last episode okay, I would so like to do more, some God. like a big recap, but like Oh, okay. I don't think there's anything left. I like mean, we we've talked just about got the sprites, those... we talked about the post retcon. Now all we have to do is talk about sort of the Final uh, conflict. The resolving everything, uh, tying and, and everything whatever up. Whatever happens after, yeah, yeah. Basically, the final um, battles and the. That, that's not to say uh, we're going to end this. Uh, we do have some things planned with some guests about other Homestuck related properties that we're going to talk about. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, that will end out the comic. That'll probably be in like a month. So. For the viewers at home, for the viewers on YouTube, we're going to be releasing some of the bonus episodes, so you'll probably have, like, what, uh, five more episodes? Four more episodes. But yeah, this is, we're coming to the end. I'm, I'm very surprised. We started this in, what, March? No, no, mm-hmm. not March. Uh, J- no, June? June? June or something like that. I think it was July, because I had started the job oh, yeah. for three weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's October. Oh, no. and like time is fake. Time is fake. But yeah, we're halfway uh, through October already. Yeah, but uh, thanks for sticking around, you guys. And uh, thanks for sticking around, the viewers. Uh, I'm going to stop recording now. Goodbye, everybody. I am also. Rewriting Homestuck is a podcast by JoJo McLovin, Janiah Riley, and Bucky Grant, hosted and produced by me, JoJo. Please follow the links in the description to each collaborator's Twitter and subscribe on YouTube.